mixed because I look at the turbans and then I look at a punchak. And to me, mm -hmm. we don't regulate punchaks. Right. By state law. Right, but I mean, so if I, if, if I can put a pump jack on my, on my line mm -hmm. and you can't do nothing about it. But we do have setbacks in there now. I mean, for, we, for we, the turbines, yes. Yeah, you know, we do have something there. Yeah. Oh, no, I, yeah, I've, I found that very intriguing myself. That, you no, know, I mean, I, did, uh, I was going to mention something. I mean, a pump jack, I can back up to a pump jack and throw a chain around the base of it and, and drag it under the trees. Right. And, and I, don't get me wrong, I'm not trying to belittle what oil production is. It's a half, you know, half mile in the ground. There's a lot of, uh, of uh, you know, there's infrastructure that's there as well. But we're, we're comparing... Uh, these wind, wind turbines are a little bit different, especially the ones we have here. These are a little bit, they're in a different league. And, uh, and, and uh, so, so when we start comparing those, or even comparing it to fiber optic, I mean, I, it's, it's a different, well, we're in it, a different it league is, here. It is totally different, but I guess I'm looking at it as a landowner, as what I can do with my property and what has to be regulated on my property. So, if I didn't want the wind turbine, and you put the wind turbine on your property, which is right next to mine, I, I'm just looking at that. But in the same in the <coughs> same thing, I'm looking at a pump jack, and somebody's pumping oil right next to me. I don't want it, but I can't do nothing about it. So, I mean. That's where I'm coming with the setbacks. I don't know what they should actually be. So I think in, in, in some ways, we have different tiers of, of, of impact. So there are those that uh, simply uh, do not want to, uh, you know, one of the most common ones is the visual impact. That mm -hmm. they can be seen from miles of you know, township away. Uh, and that is one thing. But then when we talk about setbacks, you know, there's no setbacks that's going to take away the, the visual, visual impact, right? Correct. So that's step one. Is it unbearable? And if the answer is yes, then do a moratorium, do a comp plan update, prohibit wind turbines, because you're not going to get away from that aspect of it. But, so if we fall into that second tier, and that is flicker, uh, noise, things of that nature, uh, turbulence potentially, um, then setbacks can fix those problems, right? So if you have an increased setback, you know, that, and, and the industry does a great job of being able to model where shadow flicker is going to happen, you know, the, the general decibel level right. at various radiuses and things of that nature and the general orientation of it all, but the setbacks would factor into that. And that's why we got into the weeds pretty deep in setback arguments in Reno County, because there were so many small yeah. suburban and rural uh, homesteads out there to where that setback was from center of turbine to house. And um, although they modeled shadow flicker, that was still a major concern. And that was one of the things that they looked to Pratt County as an example. Well, Pratt County is clearly less dense than southeast Reno County. Next era put in three or thirty-five hundred, three thousand or thirty-five hundred foot setbacks. Why can't you do that? Well, it gets back to the pop, you know, the, 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 density. The, the, the density of housing. You know, you could probably get ten thousand feet in, in Stafford County, right? So uh, that's kind of the level of uh, where we want to go with this. I mean, we can talk about setbacks all day long, and that's going to maybe help certain elements of, of the energy <coughs> development. Okay, so like our setbacks right now are, I don't know if this is bold or not, but it's a 1,340. Roughly a quarter mile, yeah. Mm -hmm. But it's, okay, so 
That is from the turban to a resin, correct? In my staff report in the June meetings, I talked about regulating <coughs> property boundaries. You know, there's also the option to make a setback from a property boundary instead of a residence or a structure. The only problem I see with that, with the property boundary, is a quarter mile could totally eliminate somebody that wants a turban on it, it could totally does. eliminate their property. And so that was where I was, mm -hmm. when it comes to the boundary line. And then you have to have everything just totally surveyed for sure. Which I mean they're surveying now, but um, you have to know exactly where the property lines are. kept track of the individual comments that we heard over the last you know, two go-arounds we had uh, <coughs> issues with the wind farm. And I'm not so sure that the increased setbacks would really quiet much of that. Mm. It would maybe just a little bit of it. I think in most of the not liking it would be the, the visual thing. And I'm, I'm not sure that setbacks is going to really quiet that. My my, little, but I'm not so sure that we get gain much ground. My my thought process has been more about it would address the population density thing. It, w it would be inherent in our. Yes. It would take care of that. You wouldn't have to go through this. Okay, we're going to have it on this section, not here. You know, who the who's and the where and the where not. It's it's based on. It becomes part of it through population density. It takes care of itself. And maybe I'm thinking of it wrong, but that's why I was asking no. that question. No, setbacks you know, that, 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 that move, if we do the setbacks correctly, increasing is what you're saying. Right. Yeah. If, if, if we if, if if we increase it properly, it becomes a doable situation in some areas, and I mean, as far as a, a wex going in, and and there will be other areas that will not. They won't meet the criteria. <coughs> I guess, but my point is, I'm not so sure that that was going to reduce a lot of objections. If the objection is they don't like to flicker, then it would. But if the main objective is they don't just want to see it anywhere in their, their line of sight, then that hasn't addressed that. But it would address where these corporations could put their mm -hmm. Well, that's what I'm saying. Put their plants. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, and I don't know how to how we address that because you can have someone anywhere in the county say, I don't want, I mean. Yeah, more to turn around the wind farm. I mean, that's how we address that. I mean, if we're thinking there's enough yeah. opposition that we're tired of looking at them, we don't want to look at any more, you know, then we yeah. just say, we're not going to have any more wind farms. I mean, that's how we move that to remove that objection. I agree with Mel in the sense of, you know, just setbacks. I mean, especially when you're stating that three miles is way out of the line as of too much. It's not like 25 miles. I, if I'd yeah. say, and I don't you know, know that line a 25-mile uh, setback, I'm jo joking. Yeah. Yeah. So, it's, <laughs> you know, so, you know, that's a moratorium. Yeah. But at the same time, when you start saying, okay, we're going to back down to say, okay, three miles is out of too much, and we're talking about maybe two miles, I mean, that, that's getting to the point that, you're always going to find some boundary. You can find some uh, strategic boundary to weave some pattern around to get the people of three miles. This one, you can get bury somebody around. You, know, you can be three miles around them, and you can get that person isolated Certainly. strategically. Because really, you you actually that's what your mapping does. You you find resistance, and you go where, <coughs> where you can sweep it around. And I'm in Mel's camp as of uh, you know setbacks is a it's a that's jumping into a, a negotiation of where that's at is a, a, it's a, that'd be a tough one to get into to try to resolve uh, resistance to it and it's not going to answer the answer the you know because you, you talked about three miles that isn't I mean I, I would have gone through you know for just going home it's you know ten miles here it's like I sure you know, so 
I guess my point with the three models is just a, a, a throw out number, is that uh, we, we see a lot of desire to maintain regulation of wind farms, right? We don't want to do away with it. We don't want to prohibit it. But we want to make it so onerous to where you really will never find a place in Marion County that's going to fit that criteria. That's when you have a regulatory taking, and that gets us close to a legal problem with the industry. So if we're going to try to three miles, 20 miles, whatever that number is, to make sure that nobody can go in there, or maybe uh, Jesse can only put up eight turbines in, in Marion County, we're going to have a problem with that. Let's cut to the chase and do away with it. Let's do it the right way. And if, and, and, and if it's going to be, let's maintain the opportunity for a developer to, to, to construct a third field somewhere in Marion County, then we drop down to the fine details of what do we want to see that look like. I, I, I will say without trying to prejudice the, the discussion that I think my personal opinion at the end of 80 hours of listening to, to testimony on wind farm development is I like it from the center of turbine, which is practical, to the property line. And yes, that does that does limit it. And that's the purpose of it. Right. Right? Uh, Non-participating property owners? Non-participating property owners. So it's going to make industry's job harder to, to find out. I mean, you know, they're, they're going, it's going to be a tougher road to hoe to find those types of properties or, or, or that general area where you can fit how you need to design your field with, you know, you know I, I have never designed one. I would imagine that you want it somewhat compacted at a certain distance from turbine to turbine to turbine. Uh, you don't want to have it like in one linear long snake thing that goes up towards Dickinson County. Um, but at the same time, and I'm not, so I, I think from center of turbine to property line is the key. And whether that distance is, remains at a quarter mile, 2,000 feet, I think 2,500 feet, you're getting maybe close to the breaking point on that. Uh, again, Pratt did 3,000 feet, but it's Pratt. It's in the northern part of Pratt County. I think the big thing is that, <coughs> you know, if you own 40 acres and your house sets back off the road a ways, so that's going to be easy to put a, a turbine 500 feet on the other side of the road and still be the quarter mile from that house. But you wouldn't have a turbine 500 feet on the east side of the road if it's, if it's from line. the property line. You know, and, and, you know, as I reflect on the comment you made, you know, about the negative comment, I guess <coughs> I, I'm looking at it, I'm trying to look at it from the county standpoint. For the, I mean, we have a, from the whole county, hearing those comments, you know, the, the negative, you know, we don't want it. But I've also had a lot of people, a lot of people talk to me that I would really like to get one. Well, are you going to get one? I guess are you, that's the question I'm having too. Is that, do you have one lined up for you? As no, a, you don't. Okay. No, I don't. And so, uh, I. I know that's a personal question, but it's interesting. Well, I'm it's, I mean, but I'll agree with him. I mean, there's a lot of. I've talked to a lot of people. Yes, we've heard a lot of objections, but I've talked to a lot of people. It's like, well, I wish I could have got one, or I wish, you know, wish it would still be possible for them. And so that's why, you know, we heard a lot of objection. We didn't hear a lot of the other residents of the county saying, hey, how about my area? Look at my area. Look at my land. So that's, you know, I'm, 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 I know where Dwight's coming from is there's still a lot of positive thought in the county resident-wise for additional turbines. Now, are they in an area that could have them? Probably not, but if they were, they'd be interested in entertaining the idea. So that's, I guess, the, the, the complete moratorium is, in my opinion, I don't think that's the route we want to go, the complete ban prohibition. I think if, if we can maybe narrow in on a setback, maybe based off the property line, that would help protect those who are not interested in a turbine or in a wind farm, wind energy conversion system, it would still benefit those that 
would like to have it. Now, I, I disagree with you there in the sense that I, I mean, I think just changing this boundary to something two miles, we're going to be dipping around about two miles, it's, 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 it's there. You know, and that's where I, I've heard the same arguments you've heard as well. And um, I, I, I'm looking at this, the counties around us, and I'm going, okay, Chase County, I see McPherson. I, I came through McPherson just day before yesterday, and it's pretty, I see signs there. It's pretty, pretty strong there. Uh, Reno, uh, Sedgwick. Uh, we, we see a lot of counties that are just going, wait a minute, what's going on here? And I, I, I look at this as Marion is this, it's a, we've got an open gate here, and, uh, you know, you're going to look at this as a land of opportunity when it comes down to developing that. And it's going to be good because you're, you can network these, these wind turbines, network the one grid to the next and grid them, you know, get the power connected and get it out of here. It's, but the point is, is do we want this as a, a county as of saying our, our, uh, our way forward is is just wind energy from one end to the other, and we're going to leave the gate open until it's it's. Uh, but that's it's where full. with these setbacks, you know, if if we pick a correct distance, it would you wouldn't be able to just build it. Well, I know I, my setback would be minutes. something like six miles. I, I'm just looking like six miles. This three mile when you start blocking at six three miles, I was talking six miles. <laughs> Well, that's but not a in my opinion. That's, that's not. not I mean, that's well, I know, and that's what I'm saying. Yeah. And, so, that, and that's my argument. From my point is, we can uh, negotiate some setback. From my perspective, it's an on and off switch. It's moratorium. If we're going to try to just make it hard on them, I, you know, I we can try to take yeah. the moratorium out. I mean, maybe uh, in a couple of years when we see that okay, we, we're sitting good here, we're comfortable with this, we see another opportunity. Let's take the moratorium off and let the horses run. One, one thing that, um, and, and there are people in the audience that can address this and correct me if I'm wrong, but, you know, this is an ever-changing industry. I, I, you know, I, I, I have people pop in and say, man, you should check out this wind farm down by in and around El Paso because it's a different kind of turbine design that sets lower. Uh, to me, I, I think they look a little bit funkier. I think I'd pull my car over and just stare at those things for hours, but... Um, you don't know what's going to happen with at least maybe the physical design. So, I mean, so we were talking about moratoriums. That would be just the pause button that gets us to bridge over any change to the comp plan and the regulations. So a prohibition would be one of the options that would come out of that moratorium. So we have moratoriums in, in uh, uh, McPherson County, um, and doesn't look like there's going to be anything but very specific solutions for Reno County, uh, but yeah, that would do, that would be. I, th I, I think Liam brings up a great another option since we're just creating options here, and that would be a, a moratorium of a predetermined amount of time. Um, I would probably suggest something south of two years at tops, but whatever that would look like, and the county councilors talking about talking to the uh, attorneys. That gives us a chance to look and see what's what's happened. You and know, we can always take it off. I mean, it, it could be removed it, in two it, years, it, it, it and would have, say, okay, it would have start. a finite right. end date. And then at that time, well, here's what the industry is doing. Here's what developers are doing, and here's what uh, the state looks like they're doing. Um, you know, the two-year more within a two-year moratorium, there may be the. And this is probably just my personal hope. Uh, that there would be a state level type of basic regulation of these because uh, we're again we're, we are a state with very little zoning uh, probably upwards of 90 percent of the counties are not zoned in any fashion uh, and this is the singular industry that's creating a need for that uh, I should be rejoicing for that but I'm not uh, I think it's just something that's bigger than all of us I mean do you like reading those things from Jesse and figuring out wind energy conversion system? No, nor do I. So I think it's one of these industries that are is big enough to where we need to do it, kind of like the state of Oklahoma is looking at doing a, a, a state to, uh, division of their natural resources uh, department that handle wind energy conversion systems. Whether that comes to fruition or not, I, you know, nobody knows, but 
again, that could be something that happens. The state legislature made one run up that hill, didn't get any traction, but I think there is a lot of, there's a lot of desire for counties to remain unzoned and have the state regulate the distance requirements. Usually, I think that state bill was basically just setbacks. And if there's a state statute that comes out that regulates setbacks, probably half of those counties are fine. So that could happen in a, over the course of a moratorium. So sure. yeah, that would be an option as well, is just hit pause and not make a definitive decision any, you know, within the next six months. Uh, which were, were my initial options for either to do it or don't do it, small changes or prohibition, that would be a, another interim Should step. I cut to the chase and make a motion that we... Uh, <laughs> well, no. I, was, I, mean, I mean, I don't want to, sure. we don't want to drag this out. I mean, I, we can sit here and haggle back and forth, and if we can get a vote and see where we stand. We... Certainly. I, I, I have no, I'm just the planning consultant here, but I don't mean to act like the chair, but I'm, I'm actually pretty curious to see, because we've got for and against out in the audience to hear what you, you all had a chance to hear me spout off and have a, a little bit of a listen to our discussion, maybe open up for uh, audience comment. Chairman? <laughs> I, I have no objection to well, me. I mean, we really haven't talked about a more toy and what that would mean, uh, but, but I, I guess. It, it might be wise to consider a moratorium at least until the wind farms that we have started are up and running to see I guess see where we're going. My question, if we want to do that, do we need to put it public notice and yeah. And all yeah. That? I don't think we can I don't think this is just discussion tonight. Yeah. <coughs> and <coughs> okay, and, and that's fine. I'm, I just yeah. don't yeah. want to yeah. no, jump on going. I'll go with it. <laughs> no, in fact there was some uh, uh, discussions too as of I think uh, <coughs> A gentleman, a farmer, was quoting in one of the, his uh, testimonies was uh, bring it to the county to vote. I mean, that's... A moratorium would simply be an action of the county commission. By okay. Resolution, so. But, you know, I think sometimes when it's a controversial issue like this, I mean, I think uh, maybe we should just put our head, you know, get a count to it and, and not trying to say, well, we got how many feet, how many foot, you know, 2,500 feet, 3,500 feet. It's like... Certainly. You know, we're, we're, we're uh, adding more requirements it's here, certainly and it's like, where are we getting to? It's certainly, yeah, exactly. Why arrange the deck chairs? Yeah, exactly. We no. Either take it or... Yeah, a, a moratorium would have would have served Reno County very well, and it would have served Next Era well, to be perfectly honest. You know, we, by, by being inactive on that moratorium with so many known issues, right, it served nobody to go forward. And we went forward and we hit the side of the mountain, and here we are. So, you know, lawsuits. You, you were saying before, if I understood you correctly, moratoriums, do they always have an end point? Yeah. Okay. And they're very, and they're usually, yeah, we can put a hundred year moratorium on wind farms. Yeah. What did McPherson <laughs> have? I really felt like McPherson had a year, but it felt like they're it was over, a year ago. That, that's over a year ago. I, I'm, saying, I'm saying Mc, McPherson had. Um, no applications, but I, I think they're, I wouldn't be surprised if somebody told me that McPherson's moratorium started like January 1 of 2019. I don't think McPherson, uh, so Reno County was bringing up the idea of a moratorium with, and, and they voted that down. They chose not to, to do the moratorium route. We were suggesting a six month moratorium. It was only after that December 2018 meeting that McPherson did the moratorium. I, I, that's my remembrance. So at the very end of 18 or the very start of 2019, I think. So they're coming, if it's a year, McPherson's time is coming up. I, mean, I guess, you know, like their purpose Makes really on the moratorium was to shut everything down so that nothing, if anything came in they didn't, <clears throat> until they got Right. Whatever they were wanting to change, right. change. Is it gives right? you an opportunity. Whatever length of time, and I think two <coughs> years would be the, at least in my experience, the, the far horizon. So, you know, it takes anywhere from a year or two to write a comprehensive plan. A lot of counties don't have them. It takes a year or two. If one of the ideas coming out of that planning session is to adopt regulations, again, it takes a good six months at best. 
know, there's a lot of stuff in here you just don't want to approve because Russ hit the print button. Um, so a, a one to two year time frame is probably normal. A six month uh, in Reno County was because we had just done the comp plan. I mean, I would have to change a couple of paragraphs in that document. So we didn't have to start from scratch. We could do it in six months to have the public hearings. Probably a three month moratorium would be the least amount of time. Because again, in order to enact any changes, it takes about a, two months to, to go through that process just because of public hearing notices and just the way uh, our meeting schedules are. Well, do we need public hearings to do that, to do a moratorium? No, that's an action by the governing body. Yeah. It affects this, so yeah, no. It, it, it supersedes and is above any type of zoning statutes. I oh, would they have a public hearing? Probably, probably so. I mean, they, there would be a public hearing at the county commission meeting. Yeah. For the board to recommend it, you have to have a public hearing. No. No. Uh, so in theory, we could tonight. You all could could make a motion to recommend to the county commission for a two-year moratorium on the development of WEC systems, and, you know, I'm going to make you tell you to fly a kite. Not affecting current projects. I mean, clearly, clearly I'm speaking not as the county counselor, so take I, my word for it, but, I still but no, it wouldn't have any type of I still formula. don't agree, I guess, or, or yeah. feel that the moratorium is the right direction. Um, you know, I'll, I'll stand all day long that I still know people who are, who would like a, <coughs> the opportunity, I guess. And I guess if, to, to put a moratorium on, I feel like I wouldn't be serving them accurately. Um, I mean, I know there's, there's opposition and pros and cons for anything we do here. Um, and we don't hear as much of the pros for wind energy conversion systems in these meetings, mm -hmm. um, and but I feel, you know, talking to neighbors, talking to friends, talking to the public, that the overall consensus from where I'm at is they'd be okay with the opportunity. So I guess that's why I feel to throw a moratorium out there would be a bit of a disservice to them. Um, I mean, I think our point in looking at this was trying to protect those who were against wind energy conversion systems while yet trying to provide opportunity for those who are interested. Um, I realize it's a, you know, you're walking a, a fine line mm -hmm. there to do that. Uh, but at the end of the day, we represent both people. And so I can't feel like I'm doing serving my position and saying, sorry, I know you want it, but we're just going to shut it off. Or, sorry, you have no choice, it's going to go right on your property line because they want it. So that's, I guess that's the position I'm in and, and feel that a moratorium or a prohibition isn't exactly the right direction I think we want to go. <coughs> well, I, I want to go back and your question to me was whether I was going to have a wind turbine. There's no wind turbines that are being developed in that area, so no, I won't have a wind turbine. I have leased ground. I have signed a lease for ground three years ago, okay? But that isn't, that isn't in, there's no guarantees of a wind turbine, and I would be surprised if they would put wind turbines on there because of the location of the ground. That's all coming out of the McPherson wind farm. I live right on the county line. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I've been open with that from the very beginning. I've had that, I've disclosed that all along. Uh, that, but that isn't a, I mean, it's not tied to any of the wind farms in, that are, we've had in discussion. So. What happened in McPherson County, and, and uh, I know that it was uh, 
like a year ago mm -hmm. when I visited with the agents <coughs> there, and that with and that's the next era wind farm, primarily in McPherson County. I mean, that's that was where it was proposed, and uh, it indicated that that pretty well shut that whole program down. You know, and so I don't know how. That's why I was wondering what <coughs> the moratorium was, if they had an endpoint on that or not. But um, so have. what's happened there is, that, you know, the next era is I don't know where that leads them, other than the fact that they have a contractual obligation to make lease payments, but they without ever having the opportunity to build a wind farm. Does that make sense? Yes, yes. So yeah, I mean, you know, granted, there's a, a lease check that cleared. I mean, you know, it's it's one of those things that it, it there's it. there's some benefit there in in a in a wind farm. So I, I guess from a lease. So but know, also, I, I mean, we're not here trying to cut the the setbacks and the regulations we have. Um, I mean, whether he has an interest or not, I guess it's we're still trying to make <coughs> it more feasible. To protect both sides of the line, as I guess. That's kind of what I, I agree with. I, I, guess, I guess what I, my point is, I think a lot of people, like you were talking about, Derek, on someone that wants a wind farm. It's not like drilling an oil well, where you drill an oil well and you can have a disposal, you can haul the salt water off. You can your infrastructure is it's just like the uh, uh, oil field out here on 150 on the Chase County line. There, that infrastructure is. Isolated little, he got his oil well. Mm -hmm. But when you come in here and put one of these wind farms in, you can't just have an isolated little, little, it has to be, I, yeah. it, I agree. it's not one wind turbine. It's going, what is the minimum of wind turbines that they have to justify having them come in here? You I mean, you're not going to put in two, three, no, four? It, it, I mean, it, and, and, and I the point is, point, is yeah. for me to, as a landowner and say, I want a wind farm, it's not just for me, it's, mm -hmm. I'm affecting a lot of people. I affect, if I say I want to have a 500-foot tower on my land, it's just not me finding a, around, a radius around my property that I'm going to sure. get it. It's got to have <coughs> any of them. How, what is them? We should find out what, what is the minimum wind turbines of 500-foot towers to justify having one of those. Yeah. I, so, so I guess when you start saying, well, I'd like to have a wind turbine on my property, you are putting in a pretty big footprint to say, hey, I want that, because you're getting a lot for your wanting. Your but want. but, uh, but I, I we have said, as we work through the, our county <coughs> plan, we said we were open to wind farms. And, and we, all the way through there, I mean, we, we, we processed that, worked through it, and studied it, and we said, that's where the, that's the direction Marion County wanted to go. What I was, as we went through that process, it appeared to me that we that setback thing was the one issue that wasn't quite right in that process. And that's where I was, you know, as I, it just didn't feel like that was the, where it needed to be. And I want to argue the other side of your point. Um, <clears throat> let's say collectively there's a group of, group of people that are interested, and I know a lot of people that are interested, and there's one person that owns a significant amount of land in the middle of the rest of this collective group, and they don't want it, but the rest of them do. So how do we, you know, just because that one person doesn't want to look at the tall towers, but there's 40 other people that do, that's, that's um, I guess, my, my argument to the other side of your point. There's different opportunities out there. there if you find another place out there where there's less population, you're probably going to get it. I Maybe you have to move. <laughs> I, uh, well, but at but the same time... Who's going to have to move? <coughs> exactly. either, either party the one that wants something... Uh, the, the one that wants that ish and the one But either party could move. But, but how do we well, protect the, the land... Ownership rights of those that do want it. We have protected that, that for two of them already. I, I guess what I'm saying is, is that we're going to have to have everyone <coughs> in the whole county uh, have that is interested in wind farms to satisfy them until you know. 
the open door. My, my point is it's just a two-year, we're talking a two-year, let's, let's let the dust settle, see how these two work. <coughs> and I, I see a, a strange uh, sort of aggressiveness of uh, trying to really push this. And I wasn't here when this, the, the Article 27 was, was implemented, and I understand David Mueller was, you know, very uh, focal point in trying to get it, and it was it's based on, you know, accommodating uh, wind farms, and rightfully so, but I think there are certain times when you have to look at the other side of the picture, too. And at that time, when they implemented Article 27, the north wind farm could not have been built. It was not possible, because there was a moratorium on the, the rest of the county. I was in, there was involved. a smaller yeah. overlay district. Overlay that district, only sorry, not a, not a the board south central portion yeah. of the county, so a wind project can only be an application can only be accepted in mm -hmm. that portion yes. of the okay. county. Yeah. And who drove the moratorium then, or was that it, was? It was the, just a, an overlay district. Yeah, it wasn't a moratorium. Sorry, it was an overlay district based on, at the time, the board thought that it was the, the <coughs> best area in the county. <coughs> most suitable area due to location, population, and the big one was ability to get the power out. Now, over years, over the years, those things changed and evolved, and, and that's why things were amended. And it was, it was problematic to have, you know, it's like, okay, we're going to have, we drew a circle, mm -hmm. you know, and it's kind of like, hmm, that was a, there was a challenge there. <coughs> Yeah, I agree. That, that's very tricky. Unless you would have something, you know, something feasible, theoretically could be, you know, a prohibition on development of wind farms east of 77. Well, that's under the guise that that could be an expansion of the Flint Hills area. So, I mean, if you can make that argument like La Bunce did with the natural features of the county, mm -hmm. you can draw lines, and even that in <coughs> is shaky. But it's And I'm not suggesting any of that. I'm here to write down what is the will of the commission and, and flesh it out and present something a little bit more concrete to this group so we have something in a memo form that we can point to and say, yay or nay. Or, this is an idea. This is just getting input and seeing what the issues are, seeing if anything needs to be done or if everything needs to be done. It's the way I'm seeing tonight happen. So, so what... What kind of pressure, time-wise, are we in for making a change if we want to? Is there another proposal that we're aware of that is lurching at the door that wants to get out of the old system? Or there have not been any applications submitted at this point. Are we of any of them that are in the design stage? There is land lease. But not the But I don't line. know. They exactly. could walk through the door Monday. Yeah, if someone came to my office on Monday and submitted a CUP application for another wind project, we would have to consider it. Mm -hmm. Or, but generally, but how much background work do they do? I mean, can they get close enough to make an application? Kind of there's going to be going on. I mean, there's going to be a lot of groundwork done before they get to that. Point. There that, has to right, be that's what I'm asking. Are we aware of any of that happening? Generally, you, I mean, in the last two instances, you've had a bit of a heads up because they've been in asking questions. And I mean, as far as we know, there's nothing pushing this. Yeah. This was just uh, we kind of wanted to discuss it, see if we wanted to do anything. Do we do it? Do we do it now? Do we now that we've talked about it, we think about it, and talk again next meeting? I mean, it's it's uh, there's no definitive timeline. It's, well, I it's guess just, where I'm headed with that was I. I hear somewhat of a consensus here that we <coughs> wouldn't want another farm coming in under existing plans. Talk about setbacks or you know, whatever that would look like. So if another if another project comes in, <coughs> and this happens all the time, we could have without a moratorium to stop things in time before we get our regulations written. Uh, the state is very cordial about doing this to the developers. We can have a set of changes that we want to see, a set of amendments that we want to see changed in our zoning regulations. Uh, a third project comes into the county. We can implement those proposed conditions as part of their CUP without them being ratified. Okay. 
Right. There's nothing that would prevent you from having okay. it. Well, so that's what I'm looking for. Things are very slow at KDHE. KDHE changes their whole regulations. The adoption, the adoption of those new procedures may be six months out, but our project is getting sucked into that vortex, and we're going to have to abide. Our project's going to have to abide by the future rules, not the existing rules. And that, that can happen. It's very well spelled out. If we don't have that proposed here, mm -hmm. can we propose those as a condition Absolutely. of that? So, so say so we, we didn't get anything it, yeah. agreed on, we could propose a condition if, yeah. it if, if something Certainly. walked in the door. Certainly. So you're buying the, some time. The, the downside to this is this, this is like a huge ship. It is just, it takes so much effort to get going to begin with, let alone turn it around. Mm -hmm. So just like with Reno County, yes, all of that fell according to plan theoretically. It was all legal. It all marched through the process as the process is designed to. But at the end of the day, everybody in that room would have been better served to have all those issues fleshed out before it because it would have given, and I'm not saying Next Era would have backed down, but it would have at least given Next Era in that case, or the property owners in this last case, where industry lost one and then industry won one here in Marion County, if you want to look at it that way, it would have just ended probably 50% of the debate at the stand. I mean, so it, having the regulations done the way we, it, way the county would like to see them go in the future would at least allow industry the heads up before they spend any money on due diligence to figure out where they can go instead of saying based on your standards we can go here and then find <coughs> out that we're going to impose all these other conditions they're going to look at it saying man I wish I would have known that six months ago I wish you I would have known mark. that a year ago I wouldn't have spent the money that I've spent putting this proposal together only to get shot down at the end. So with projects this large, and I would probably argue any zoning project, the reason that we want to codify it, if, if we're all in agreement with what needs to go forward, uh, what needs to happen going forward, it simply gives anybody that's going to come in with an application a, 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 a legitimate heads up as to what they can expect. So if I'm designing a, a new field I mean, it's critical. Is that quarter mile standard from turbine to house going to stick? Because it's radically different if you're proposing, if I'm hearing that you're thinking about a 2000 from turbine to property line, I can't do anything. Yeah. To, have that, to have that decision made at the last possible moment in the process, at the end of the process. That, that would be my only two cents on that. And but yes, to answer your question, sure we can do that. Yeah. But they can't do any of that design work until they're done doing the lease work. Because how do they know who's going to be Absolutely. in and who's, who's out? No, the, 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 the property guys for the industry is, are the ones that are the telltale sign that's coming. Yeah. That's why in Reno County, I mean, there was like eight people involved in that comp plan creation. And then the last two meetings, we had 50 people there. And that only one reason, and that's because Next Era's guy was out there signing leases. Happening yeah, absolutely. I have an interesting story. I, I know I'm bringing it up because this is sort of up on the table here. I know a, a, a group of people from Hereford, Texas, and they had a wind farm that came in there. And once <coughs> they started leasing, the landowners all got together and said, you're going to talk to one person. They're going to represent us all. Yep. You're going to cut a deal for this whole, if you own 40 acres, 100 acres. <coughs> they, they prorated it against the landowners in that area. And the wind farm dealt with one person. They didn't take everybody out to their kitchen table and try to cut a deal with the north side of the county or the south side. And 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 I, I think that. And I'm not trying to. No. You know, I'm I'm just throwing ideas out here to try to get. Uh, you know. Uh, you know, how do you organize the county? And it would help if they did get a, everyone in is in consensus to that in that group. And, and it wouldn't be this high, and you know, grab somebody and, and cut a deal with them here and then try to get a better deal for this one, and then when they find out, well, I never knew they got this. So I know I'm talking leases here, too, which right. I, maybe we shouldn't be dealing with that, but well, it is something, that, it is something that. that to try to... Uh, right. I mean, I, I've sat there and I've often thought, man, I wonder, 
because because the, the 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 siren song is money for struggling school districts for struggling counties uh, and, and that's kind of a sad thing to sit and watch is like are you going to get paid because there's really not a lot of good construct to whether or not tax you know pilot agreements are valid can you walk can industry walk away from pilot agreements uh, you know Dave Bierotz is a strong proponent of saying yeah they can there's nothing that guarantees this money so I you know it's one thing to have this land use imposed upon you and it's another thing when you have clear-cut winners and losers from a financial standpoint and one can make the argument that we're you know, we're proving that we're giving money to the school district so ever all boats rise but yeah okay maybe but what's the, where's the details on that to create a benefit district to where you as the landowner a participating landowner would get a certain premium but non-participating landowners within the a boundary of the project <coughs> would have some sort of abatement or payment or you know whatever that is clearly that's outside of the realm of us right uh, right and i, I, I shouldn't have even brought it up no but i think ultimately that's since we're just talking here and having coffee i think that's a one of one of the things that the state could look at is some sort of mechanism by which the monies from this uh, is better understood uh, where it's coming from, where it's going, and who's going to help uh, would take the sting out of it. You still wouldn't want it, but it would be nice to at least know that you're on the team. You're not part of the team. You're not getting absolutely out of the team, right? Uh, more so, more applicable to the Reno County because that was a big thing. Was show us how we're going to benefit. Show us how we're going to benefit. Uh, but there again. Any talk that the state would ever change their mind on the tax property tax abatement for ten years? Well, I can't. I, I don't know. I, I'd say people in the industry would know that a lot better than I do. I can't imagine it just because I. It, it to me, it seemed like a pretty. Is well, yeah, <coughs> same ten year. Story. Yeah. So that was probably. To be perfectly honest, I mean, oil and gas is, is in that argument, in that discussion as well. So then you have a strong lobby. It'd be resource as a whole, probably, I would imagine. Oh, energy yeah, I mean, wind, wind energy is a little yeah. bit new and, and all of that stuff. Oil and gas is obviously very well ingrained in Kansas. So one lobby stronger than the other. They, I don't know if they've teamed up or what, but that <coughs> abatement issue, I think whatever they came up with this 10-year abatement is going to be. I mean, you have to realize and this is something that I realized early, early on. The state of Kansas is 100% pluck those turbines. The state of Kansas wants as many wind turbines in the state of Kansas as physically possible. And I'm, that's hyperbole, but you get my drift. There's no cavalry for the people that do not want to see wind energy or want harsher, more restrictive regulation of wind industry. The cavalry of the state legislature is not coming over that hill in my personal opinion. And I think what we see with the tax abatement, better call them that a day, good enough. Okay, so I'm going to feed into the here to the state tax laws. So where does the state get their tax revenue from the wind energy? I have no conception. So why would they be so pro-wind energy? I mean, if they're, if they're, I, mean I can... I mean, read the state report on wind energy. I mean, it's uh, it's... I read that to see if there was any bullets from Topeka that Reno County could use within their debate on, on wind energy here. And, and just reading through all of the you know, 15, 20 years of almost 20 years worth of discussion at the state level, you read that stuff and I mean, it's, it's like next era wrote it. I mean, it just is very, uh, I, I don't know if there's a, a, a federal a federal interest. It seems like there's a federal interest in promoting uh, alternative forms of energy and whatever the state, however the state would glean any financial windfall from that. Well, I know there's a lot of green energy looking for that and wanting to put that, but I'm thinking the moment there has to be money to really drive anything. So there was, how that would work. Th there was some percentage based of energy generation that you had to meet. And I think it's something like 20% or 25% of energy has to be green or renewable energy. Yeah. And it's a race to that goal, if that makes sense. What what pot of gold lies at the end of that goal attainment? I have no idea. I, I will certainly do more research and find that out. 
I should be more con uh, I should be more knowledgeable about that element. Although it really just doesn't pertain to land use at all, right. other than the fact that uh, the state encourages. One other question that, as I reflected on going through this process, what if someone were to come in and uh, <coughs> request information for solar? Mm -hmm. how, how do we address that? <coughs> Where does that fit in in a commercial solar? Got mail from them, haven't you? What? You surely got mail from those people, haven't you? Yep. Yeah. All right. Here, yep, from somebody. <laughs> well, I've gotten cards from them. Yeah. So, uh, many places, because that's even newer, right? Yeah. Uh, that's why I'm at. You know, it's kind of like. I think I, I think I at least knew of last year at this time three solar facilities. And maybe that's just three that's under Next Era's umbrella that were east of us, uh, in the eastern third of Kansas. Okay. Uh, I think I think many people, I don't know where I stand on it, but um, you know, many people, uh, including Sedgwick County for that matter, really sees it as apples and oranges. They don't see them have the same impact, uh, the same visual impact. No, I'm not saying yeah. that. I'm not saying they're the same thing. I'm just Right, so it would fall it's, under as a general. It's, it's, it's just a. I think yeah, we are, we, are, we for, are there things that we should be proactive in I'm thinking about? If oh, yeah, it and it would be not just solar, but alternative energies in general, and battery storage. And, I mean, there's a whole plethora of things that are coming in that are evolving. Mm -hmm. It wouldn't be unlike, say, Evergy's um, substation, just on a larger scale. So we would look to industry to see what best practices are. We'd be learning on the curve. So yeah, I mean, if it, I will add that to yeah, and I don't know whatever, whatever discussion we have to next. be thinking that um, in in those lines, but you know, it's like I'd rather be proactive than reactive. There's many more things you can do to curb a lot of the negative impacts that people associate with the turbines. Visual, you can screen them, you can have a moderate screening of, of, the, of the facility. I think they're generally a much smaller footprint. Um, you know, we, we just talked about, you know, wind turbines by the design are spread out, so their function needs would be fairly compacted. Mm -hmm. You can have a large field, but they don't have to be. Yeah, one one landowner could potentially have most of the solar yeah. I, I will educate myself uh, and then in January if we bring this back up in January we can certainly discuss it among these other options so my intention is to probably flesh this out in the memo talk about some of these things in greater detail provide a little bit more background uh, probably do something along the lines of what other jurisdictions have done well, you know where are the goalposts and from my understanding from KAC last month or whenever that was, it's it's pretty sporadic across the state at this point. Mm -hmm. Well, the solar panels? Or? Well, regulating oh. those types of yeah. conversion systems or storages. Anybody else have any more questions? Maybe just as a, a process question, if we decide that we want to make some change on the setback, what's the, the process of making that happen? So first we would have to, you as a board <coughs> need to decide that we want to go ahead and proceed with that, and then suggest that it be on the agenda for the January meeting. I would have to get a public notice in the newspaper and then send letters out to the municipalities and townships. It would be exactly then, like our electric transmission line. It, it's basically a text, text amendment. Mm -hmm. 
So in that pre-note of sort of deciding to do that, we wouldn't necessarily decide at that time what that setback would be. That would be decided at the meeting, and there would be a public hearing as a part of that. So that public notice is for the public hearing. The public hearing will be held in at our next regular meeting, mm -hmm. January, if we end up meeting in January. And then that would allow the board to discuss it. If you choose to make a motion, you could. You could table it. You know, if you want to consider it at a future meeting, you could do that. The public notice would have already been out. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> what we're after, if if we want to do something today, is to put some kind of a semi-draft of some kind of words, I guess, or, or tell Russ and Sharon kind of the, what we're after, and they'll come up with some drafts <coughs> or text edit mm -hmm. that we would we would look at if we decide to do something. To discuss it at that public yeah. hearing. I'd be in favor of doing some kind of setback <coughs> the boundary line, whether it's 2,000 or 2,500 feet or 3,000, I don't care. But work off of the boundary line versus the to the record in the house. Yeah, if that would start the draft process. I think that's kind of the way I'm leaning also is, is you know, right now we're to the residents. Let's back it up to the property line, and then where we go from there um, is kind of a good starting spot. Do do we want, as a commission, do we want to move forward and do a public hearing and I guess load them up for? Well, that's kind of where I was asking. What yeah. that would be what's, the next what's step. everybody's? Let's go around the table. I mean, I, you know, Glenn said what he thought. Yeah. I said what I thought. Mel, what do you? Well, I I think I like the idea of going to property line rather than the current residence because that would give freedom and some protection to a, a new building site. Uh, you know, we're different location, uh, maybe a sub subdivision. I'm not sure how that works into the whole thing. If there'd be some acres sold off, uh, <coughs> that would give that setback to that new property house, that new property line. I like that idea. I guess at this point I wouldn't be prepared to say what that <coughs> setback needs to be. And, but and I, I like the idea of doing this property line rather than the residence. Because it just gives a little more protection for future use of that property. Sure. Go ahead. When it comes to the magnitude of these structures, I, I don't think changing these for by a few feet is <coughs> the um, uh, sort of answer uh, as of trying to push to 3,000 feet or a half mile, or, you know, or a <coughs> mile, you know, something of like that. I mean, or three miles. You know, the answer, I think uh, we've been very uh, accommodating to wind energy at this point in time, and I think we've got, we're, I'm looking more towards a moratorium that would uh, sort of give us a pause, put a pause on it, and uh, give us some, a couple of years, and uh, see how things flush up, and then hit the button, either continue on or play out. <coughs> that's my opinion, and that's why I feel, sure. not feel, that's my uh, uh, thinking. Um, I've said all along I'd rather do the property line instead of a house. I mean, you're protecting, I want to protect my property, so property line. I, I would go property line. I, I'm not, I don't know where the how far it is, you know, it's got to be something that's reasonable, and if you get it, you know, it's not the three mile, <clears throat> three mile, then you might, I mean, you're pretty, you know, and if you get 3,000 feet, you know, do the math on that, that doesn't, you know, you aren't really, you might as well do three miles. Uh, so I think we need to be we need to be cognizant of that, you know, and find that find that point because if you put it too far, you, you might as well put it ten miles. I mean, it doesn't make any yeah. difference. And so, so, I'm not. I don't support a moratorium. I think we can. I think we can keep working on this and figure out a way to come up with a property line setback. And 
just to clarify that property of non-participating yeah. members of fabric land, landowners. Yeah, yeah. That, that's that's where the in the grand scheme of things, it would be just that simple of a change. Now, not simple in the consequences of it, but simple as far as what we're cutting correct. out or changing, modifying. And as far as distance, you know, you'll have whether you, you want it to be three miles, quarter mile, you know. We can we can amend that on the text as we re review it. Yeah. Um, I mean that's the, right. the, the distances. I mean we can start out with a with an edit of a quarter mile. Just take what we have and back it up to the prop non participating Put property line. Property. And then we can amend that distance how we see fit. You know, I just need to think through that a little bit more. You know, as far as what how that plays out and, and what. Yeah, and if the commission feels that <coughs> we've had enough discussion here. Uh, not saying that we're ending the discussion tonight, but you know, if we feel like we can sane out of, of this evening's d uh, discussion enough to feel comfortable that we could do a public hearing in January to get it done, then we can go that route. Or the other option would be, well, t to again get everybody in the room's uh, opinions and, and thoughts and comments, and then consolidate it. It would give me a chance to kind of give you all better information as far as best practices, other examples around the state and out around the Midwest uh, of what has worked perhaps and what hasn't worked. To, so we know a little bit finer detail of what we're going to change and then hold a public hearing then in February to actually make that change. That would be one option. That would be kind of the slower boat. The fast boat would be to you know, get this thing on the docket or amendment to, to the regulations in January, and then just hash this out again. And, and, and I'm not pro one way or the other, but. Uh, My sense is, is that I might be wrong, but I, I just don't see that there's a reason to ram this thing through to, I mean, I'd rather do it right and have a, a chance to hear the public. I mean, I mean, we're all better off if we can hear have a dialogue about all the different sides of it so we get something that works good for the long term uh, my personal opinion I guess is I'd like to put out what we're you know put it out there for right. public notice right That's fine. let's have you know if we don't think after we've heard from from the public comment that next meeting that we you know, we'll either table it then, or I mean, we can kill it then too. Right. Um, but, but yeah, I agree. I mean, I there's there's no sense in being in any hurry because there's nothing pushing us down the line. Um, we'd like to maybe nail this closer to where it should be. Um, I think is our overall goal, as the way I feel from the board. Um, that's my feeling. So I mean, I guess I think. And, and stop me if I'm Glenn wrong. Has, Glenn has some things he wants to tell us. <laughs> <laughs> I would just think that we have three people that are absent today, too. Mm -hmm. um, if, if we want to put it to a vote next month, then we have three people that are out of the loop here. So I don't know if that calls for a, an extra meeting or a special meeting. Well, we have to go yeah. through the public comment. I mean, that's part of Yeah, right. I, I, mean, I agree, but you have three people here that aren't privy to our conversation. That's true. That's a great point. I mean, yeah, I know I have an opportunity. I mean, I'm not opposed to let's kick it to the next meeting. Yeah. And then we can go from there. We can still discuss this like we're doing tonight yeah. in mm -hmm. January. I'm not opposed to that either. But it's the public hearing, you know. Right. Maybe we could Going discuss it next month and then do the public hearing. Yeah. The following? Yeah. Is that, that's, what that's what I'm saying. I'm not do a public that. hearing. Then, get everybody here with it. And maybe we don't have to discuss it quite as long. No. As and, and then if we have some finer, you will see something actually fleshed out by me. You'll have mm. something from me to say, okay, I that's don't like good. this, I yeah. don't like this, edit this. I can turn that around. And then we can disseminate it to the, the public, mm -hmm. so everybody in the audience can have it. Sounds good. Uh, everybody, yeah. I mean, is that we we'll kind of kick this can to the next meeting? Actually, there's only two people. Yeah, there's one. Just two. We're only missing two. But yeah, 
kind of kick it to the next meeting. We'll discuss it again. And then from there, we can decide what we want to set for the public hearing. I'm good with that. Uh, off agenda items. We'll catch that when we do the public comment. Just a couple of quick things. Um, for those of you who don't know, Floyd Bear resigned at a commission meeting here <coughs> about a month ago. Um, so that seat sits open right now. The other thing is that the commissioners are starting to talk about redistricting and how that will <coughs> work out with the planning commission. Um, so at some point soon. Is okay? I didn't What's coming through that door? Shane? There's some stuff there. Yeah, there's some stuff there. That scares me. Um, At least it'll get captured on tape. So, you know, that, that may change the dynamics. It, it will change It'll the dynamics. It'll change the dynamics of here, yeah. That was actually my question. Well, so will it completely restructure? I mean, sitting members now? Yes. I'm not exactly sure how they're going to plan to do it, if they're going to phase the existing members somehow, or if they'll just say this is what we're doing and it starts here. I don't honestly know. Um, well, so we might have a whole other different group of people discussion. Kind of my, my suggestion was to phase the members that are still serving, who still are in the middle of a term. Um, right. Just do the change at the end of this. Right, yeah. I don't know how well that would be. So that's, I don't know that was my question. Yeah. With the new five member commission, what's going to happen with that? Yeah. I, I have some suggestions, but I'm not. I mean, I know I'm affected by <coughs> Right, yeah. A lot of your districts will actually, you're <coughs> now in a, you live in a district Different that district. you're not serving yeah. on the board for. Yep. So. Um, Brad Chance, our legal counsel, is looking into that a little bit as well. Um, he has our map. He has all of your names and your terms, where you're at within that term, what districts you are now in by your address. Um, that's why I haven't called around. Usually this time of year, I'm calling around asking if you're willing to continue your appointment. Called anyone yet because I don't know what the commissioners are going to decide to do yet. Will they make the decision by the end of the year? I honestly don't know. If not, we'll carry it. We'll just carry yeah. it. Yeah. I mean, the new commissioners <laughs> go into effect <laughs> January 1st, right? They're already seated. They're already seated. Okay. Yeah, as soon as the the yes. was finished that so after the fifteenth, they were going. And so, if okay. if, yeah. if they should, <coughs> I don't know if they, they would consider that, but if they clean up some of the districts on the commission level, mm -hmm. and then change that, then that'll tweak it all again, right? If the if the I mean, districts if they, change if, again, if, if there are any changes on the commission districts, so the, yeah. I mean, the way they're put together, it was protecting commissioners. Yeah. And, and here's the other thing. There was a c big conversation about whether the planning commission should be at large or more jurisdictional. And I, I'm a strong proponent for jurisdictional with a couple of at large. Because I think you could get a lot of members appointed from one geographic location and the other locations aren't represented. With five members, you're going to want that. And especially the way that the districts are, the commission districts are set up. <coughs> you could get a lot of people from the cities. So you could have it all, yeah. Yeah. It could all be cities. And so we'll also have to rewrite the bylaws when, we, when they decide on what they're going to do. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that was coming. Uh, it's all good, I guess. Yeah. Well, I couldn't remember how we're structured. And I would help mm -hmm. with the bylaw. <coughs> I didn't want to admit that. <laughs> you know, and it'll, it'll affect the BZA and 
different things like that, some of those little things that go along with it. So, I apologize, but for right now, we're just kind of sitting on it until the commissioners decide what, what they want to do with it. And I appreciate each and every one of you, and thank you for serving on this board. I really appreciated all the input and the different dynamic that comes together and the way that you're all able to discuss things that you each have different opinions on and you've been very respectful. Not many people could handle this kind of glory. <laughs> it's the pay. It's yeah, it's got to be the pay, right? This is your first year. You're still <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> it goes down after the first year. <laughs> Had your paycheck come through? <laughs> I faxed it. <laughs> it's in the mail. Yeah. Okay. Um, so that could, that could hold a. I mean, that's why I'm, I'm glad we don't have anything really open then, because it it might be a whole different dynamic. But yeah. they've taken they've taken office buildings. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's a lot of places. Pool. They took office. Yeah, the next meeting? Right after. Yeah, actually, the, the Monday following the after the canvas. Mm -hmm. Well, that was just it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In the office or in, in the audience, but then the field that was. That's right. Yeah. So it, it might we well, might not have a January meeting if they don't. I mean, they have to decide for us to have a January meeting. Well, regardless, we'll, we'll because we'll, sit on we'll expire term limits. Well. And with one missing. And expired term limits will have a hard time having a form. T typically, <coughs> those who are going out of office come back for that first meeting in January, anyways, to swear in the new members. So I, I think guess you we could, could technically still meet. Yeah. I'm not an attorney. We'll see what happens when the time comes, I guess. Yeah, yeah we can discuss whatever we want to. We just can't <coughs> vote on it. Historically, I believe um, Kansas Weather has kind of led the train we on that one. We haven't had meetings in January. Did we have a January meeting last year in May? We had our appreciation mm -hmm. there. In May? Yeah. May. yeah. So. <laughs> so, we'll see. You know, we had food and everything ordered for that one, and they had to freeze it. <laughs> we did have a weather delay? I thought we just oh, didn't yeah. have any. I, did, I just thought we didn't have any agenda items. Oh, wait, wait, no, we, 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 we drive a long ways to come to a non agenda. They <laughs> 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 yeah. have a draft, a very draft 2020 schedule, and it actually has pencil markings on it because I'm working with three other offices on this. So if you'd like to look at <coughs> it and make sure there's nothing I'm missing. Um, It all gets a little complicated to put that together. One thing that I did change this, for this upcoming year, typically applications are due the day before the publication deadline, like my deadline to get a legal notice all typed up. I'd like a little more time to review those applications, especially to larger projects than <coughs> the day of our meeting. So I back that up by one each. I, I don't know what's typical. What, what do other <coughs> planning commissioners do? Well, Wichita Sedgwick County just has a, just a tremendous amount of caseload. So it's eight days um, between filing deadline and notifications being put out. Five days for the published and eight days for the mailed. Uh, most other counties it's you know the deadline is one month before the planning commission meeting and then that gives them nine days to eleven days to rather to put it together. That's restrictive. You know, you have one ship that failed. Uh, but I would give you at least three I would say three days of just being asked off the cuff. So you have a chance to review the application before we and then make sure that it gets to the public Now, is there anything hard and fast about that deadline, or can you <coughs> no, you're up to the discretion of the administrator? 
I said put get, a deadline in and stick with it. I mean, it's they're the one okay. making the application. If they know the deadline, then they're just going to use my name. I mean, it's just like the old deadline. Okay. And I, I guess you can have name. special meetings if you have to. Yeah. Um, I, it, it's not going to We have such a variance in the applications that come in. You know, we get <laughs> applications so. that have <laughs> six binders of information. I'm not going to call out any names or anything like Don't that. And then we have ones that want to have <laughs> it's only done three times. two residents on or, you know, something yeah. that's way more simple to hatch out and research than... You know, a lot of times, I mean, I, I think the most <coughs> simple way would be if, you know, we meet on the, the fourth Thursday, then it's the, the month ahead. So, mm -hmm. so today would have been a closing deadline. Th that's what it is currently. Oh, okay. So today because publication been, day is tomorrow. Well, I would have right. to have the legal See, description ready for tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. I so see. now and it's, it's a week ahead of our meeting now. Yeah. So that you have some time to, which I... I completely spaced off the once a week publication. Yeah. yeah. That's I, my bad. I mean, I can make it for the Monday and then have yeah. basically four days to review it. That yeah, way you can announce what cases are coming up to planning expansion. Give yourself time to. Uh, That's what I say. I mean, it's stuff. it's really it's on the applicant to get it. I mean, you lay out the deadline from the beginning. Mm -hmm. This is what it is. And they all wait till the last. Yeah. Most of them. Uh, Ninety-eight percent wait until the last minute. Human nature. I find not everybody. At four o'clock. Most. Yeah. Most. Yeah. Yeah. Majority. Yeah. But I wouldn't leave it up to your discretion because that'll come back. I just put, I a mean, deadline that's, that's 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 put a deadline that's out there and stick with it. That's what I do. Okay. Not to stretch out the whole. I know when <coughs> someone wants a permit for something, they don't want to wait an extra week. Sorry, but earlier. There's an there's an important reason for that. I mean, the meeting, the approval process <coughs> is still going to happen at the same time. Yeah. It's just they have to have it to you for review. Or so. Damn, and, and realistically, it should help them. Because if you catch something, um, then it can be corrected. It can be corrected, yeah. Or they could have it in time. Right. For the meeting. Yeah. So and you still have that three day discretion. If you know, <coughs> somebody comes in and says, man, I can't give you a check until tomorrow. Yeah. Because they're again, you know. Yeah. yeah. We've had companies come in and fully expect that they handed in an application, I have all their paperwork. And ask, oh, can you take a credit card for my payment? <laughs> well, we can't here, so if you could bring me a check tomorrow, we're good. That always happens everywhere. That's all I have. Anybody else have anything? <coughs> agenda? Um, do you want any? I know we briefly talked about suggestions for the meal. Yeah. Anybody have um, any suggestions or thoughts or comments? So we have an annual meal each year. When were you at Oh, at the last year. Okay. Um, and typically it's something catered but not extravagant. Something we have a budget. We just have the wind farm to do this. <laughs> and last year it was what? Yeah, Taco. Yeah, Taco's truck. <laughs> Taco's truck. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that was, and it was, was good. good. Yeah. I mean, before, I think the... We've done Carlson. Well, they used to have a barbecue, yeah. but it's... It's gone. Yeah. But we've done Carlson for too, and it was good. Yeah. They, we had, like, smothered pork chops mm -hmm. for <coughs> one year. I, I'm really what you guys come up with is... Oh, I know I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> I have a strong opinion. <laughs> we don't want I'm real sure that that's not happening. <laughs> so you just don't have any option, I mean... Keith Foods out of Gospel does catering, okay. if you aren't aware of that, but mm -hmm. um, I, I mean, I'd say anything within the county is a good competition. <coughs> we've called around. We try it's not to, I mean, Marion is convenient. Do you like um, so my, a lot of times we're cheaper lives in Manhattan. because oh, yeah. the caterers so went by the way, they have lot every touch week. mileage yeah. too. Yeah. 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 So it's my brother, 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 my
There you go. Yeah, that's Carl, right. Carlita. 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 Kane. So it's his ex-wife. Okay. It's a daughter Burn. of the lady. Oh, okay. Yeah. And I've had one of theirs. So they, they put all She's the good. Yeah. Um, A-R-L-E-T-T-A. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Kane. Her husband's name's Kenneth. So you know. don't, don't you ask us to go around and sample it then? <laughs> <laughs> you go right ahead. It's on your own yeah. heart. <laughs> oh, I thought on my own. You can take it out of your paycheck that you're getting. That big paycheck. Yeah. 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 I think it's a good thing we've been around eight to twelve dollars a plate. We budgeted for and Second to adjourn. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Meeting adjourned.